Took a while to get here. Joining us now to talk about the battle over the debt limit and where lawmakers go from here is Representative Ron Kind. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. We Glad to be home. It. it was getting pretty hot and sticky in Washington in more ways than one. Yeah, yeah I bet. Absolutely. Now, we know that under this bill that uh, the next challenge for Congress is choosing a bipartisan committee that is going to find up to $1.5 trillion in deficit cuts. Now, they have to do this in, by Christmas right. um, or face across the board budget cuts. How do you feel that lawmakers are going to be at working together this time around? Well, they? first of all, this agreement was essential because the alternative was unacceptable, and that's defaulting on our obligations for the first time in our nation's history, jeopardizing a AAA bond rating, driving up interest costs for businesses and families alike. That would have effectively been the economic break to any type of recovery that we need in this country right now. But it's not a solution. It's a first step. And the next step is having this committee work and try to find a balanced plan that, that will get our structural budget deficits under control. It's essential that we do it. But we should do it the smart way, not the dumb way. The dumb way being lacking investments that can create jobs and get our economy functioning again. You mentioned a AAA credit rating. Some people believe that might be downgraded even though we, we passed this agreement. Do you think it'll, it'll still be downgraded? Well, the rating agencies made it clear that's a two-step process. First, they immediately don't default. Uh, which would jeopardize our full faith in credit and uh, investors both at home and abroad would have asked for a higher premium. But the second step is coming up with a good long-term bipartisan plan that is balanced, that makes sensible spending reductions to get these deficits under control. Mm -hmm. I think we can do that because there are large areas in the federal budget that we can reduce in funding but without jeopardizing job creation at the same time. Now, yesterday, the House passed this measure with the help of Gabby Giffords. Yeah. Um, a surprise visit from her. Um, what, was, what was the feeling? What was it like to see her again? Well, it was amazing. After weeks and weeks of people being at each other's throats, the gridlock and the dysfunction of government, having her walk into the House chamber for the first time since that shooting, very emotional. It was a real uplift. And she's a close personal friend of mine. I had a chance to chat with her. She looked great. I gave her a big hug. Um, uh, she's, it's a long road to recovery. But just having her there and casting that vote, I think, uh, sent a message, a larger message to all of us. Let's get real. I mean, there are some very important things that we have to address, but let's also keep this in perspective. Did it change the mood a little bit, at least on the floor? It did. And you know, I, I think it did. You know, after months of negotiating and, you know, hard fought battles for her to be there and just her physical presence alone on both sides, you know, people were very happy to see her come in. All right, and it sounds like the next step is to get people working again. Before this interview, we heard the story, and it looks like that is what's next on the agenda. How do you, how are Congress people proposing to do that? How do well, we do this? You know, our economy is underperforming. We've had some pretty bad economic data the last couple of weeks. It's the number one contributor to the huge budget deficits that we face today. So you would think the number one focus is what we need to get, get to have this economy creating good paying jobs. And there are ways that we can do that. We shouldn't be shortchanging education and job training, the infrastructure investment that we need as a nation, scientific research. But on the other hand, spending cuts. I mean, we can't afford $2 billion a week in Afghanistan and building up nations like Iraq and Afghanistan when we have nation building to do right here at home and then continuing the reform with health care expenses which is the biggest cost driver that we have in our country today and what we can do to bring those costs down which would also help the economy all right ron thank you so much for being with us happy today. to do it we appreciate it now there's one week to go 